Uh, hello, this is the uh, second in a couple of videos on celestial navigation using uh, QTVLM. And uh, this one will make more sense, I think, if you'd go through and take a look at the first one. In the first video, we took this work form. This is standard celestial navigation. Well, it's a star path celestial navigation work form with two sites, Vega and Venus. And we took this information for the plotting here. And then we uh, plotted those two LOPs in the standard procedure explained in that previous video. I'll link it in the description. And we got this result. And here was the fix. And then we can right click the fix and read the lat lawn of the fix and so on. So now we want to try and that and that takes a few minutes to do. Plus, remember, that's just the plotting. We had to do all fill out all the forms and everything else. Now I want to show a, a new trick that you can do with uh, QTVLM uh, in the latest version. Or I should say, right now I'm using a beta which has this new feature in it, but I'm, uh, I'm assuming that the next release model will have this feature as standard. I'll show that in a moment. But if you want to test this right now, I'm using uh, version 5.12.14, beta 4. So, okay, so that's what we're going to do now. And so first, let me just... Uh, Let's just get rid of this. Uh, right click, delete all marks, yes. Okay, so there was a fix that we had and that's what we're, we're gonna start working with. So um, let me see, and then I mentioned that we're using this program QTVLM, which is a free program for a, uh, for a, Macs, uh, for a Mac or PC. Um, let me, but I th let me review real quickly uh, what how the celestial navigation works. Uh, let's see, where do I have this uh, here? Okay, this is from our textbook. Uh, let me see. Okay, here's our textbook, Celestial Navigation. And this is, by the way, I just have to mention because of the style, the way we teach this, this is way in the back of the book. We don't get into this kind of theory of how celestial navigation works till you're already doing sites and and you've got the process totally under control for real navigation. Then, we, then in the last chapter 10, we start looking at the mathematics of how all this works and the principles. Uh, we have more of a cookbook approach from the beginning. But anyway, here is, uh, let's see, uh, Zenith, this, let's go back to this picture. Here's a star light from a star coming down hitting the Earth. These are very distant stars, so all these light rays are parallel to each other. And this angle, H0, the observed height, or observed altitude, that angle right there, that's above the horizon. That's how high the star is above the horizon. That's H0. And that's what we measure with a sextant. When we measure, we measure HS with a sextant, and we make a several, several corrections, refraction, so forth, uh, index correction, so forth, and we get HO. And then that's the height of the, that's the height of the star, say, or sun, moon, or planet, above the horizon. And then here is the other parameter. That's 90. This is the point right above our head as we took the sight. That's the zenith. And this angle from the zenith down to that line, that star line, that's called the zenith distance. That's the real meat of the program. That's what we want to know. That's the science of it. That's z. But we can't measure z because we have no reference. But here we have the reference for the horizon. We measure h o. So if you do this a geometry here, alpha, alpha, like this, you'll see that this angle z here is the same as this angle z, which is in fact the distance between us and the point right underneath the sun, right underneath the, well, the, the star, whatever. So this z is equal to this distance with this formula. This, again, it's the back of our book discusses this. Then, then what we do, then we have the gp, and then we know that at the time of our sight, no matter where you were on the Earth, if you measured, if you measured that same height of the sun, you were somewhere on that circle. Here you're on that circle looking south, here you're looking north, looking east, and so forth. But this is called the circle of equal altitude, and that's where uh, we're located, and that's what we've discovered when we did a site. And then you do site one and site two, and the intersection of those two is your position. 
Now, in the standard method, we're not intersecting circles like this. We're making some approximations where we make a, we zoom in on this area right here, and we, we approximate a section of that as a straight line and then do some tricks invented about the time of the Civil War. We do some tricks to figure out where that intersection is without actually doing the mathematics of intersecting these circles. Now, however, with this program, with QTVLM in its latest edition, we can now indeed intersect those circles and go straight to the more accurate uh, direct solution. Uh, let me see here. Add, and, uh, okay, now, so, okay. So that's how it works. Let's see, what do I want to show now? Let me go back to the program. And so the way that, the, okay, so the, the way that we do that, let's see, this is for the circles. Let me get rid of this. Again, the process for doing this is going to be very fast. It just takes me a while to, a while to explain it. Um, but so here is now that same form, but I've just highlighted in the work form the information that we need. We need the, um, we need the plot, the GP, the point underneath the body. And, that's a, and the longitude of that is called the GHA, measured 0 to 360 to the west. That's this number. And then we need to know the latitude of the GP. That's this number, the declination. Now, after you're doing cell nav for a while, this all becomes a second nature. And then here is that HO, the height you measured above the horizon with everything corrected. But what we want is we don't want HO. We need to know the actual zenith distance. So what you do is you take, it's 90 minus Z. So that's 90 is the same as 8960 minus this 3743.1. That's that angle. And then each degree is 60 miles, nautical miles along a great circle. So you've got um, 52 times 60 plus 16.9. There, 31, 36.9. That is how many nautical miles it was from uh, uh, to the um, to the GP from our actual true position at the time we did the site. And the same thing goes on. Here's the one for Venus. Now in this form here, you see we ended up with it because we have to, the way you do star GHAs, you end up with a big number, but you just subtract 360 from that. And so this GHA, the longitude of this GP is 47 degrees, 14.6. And again, here's we figure that. You can, if you want to check that, you can stop the video and do that. Okay, so those are the values we want. Now, let me, uh, let's see, how can I, I think I have these plotted already. Um, uh, okay, yes, uh, yes, okay, here we go. Here is the GP for Venus, right here, and I've plotted this, and if I edit this, and, and in the previous video, it's showing how you uh, plot these carefully and, and so forth, but it's, you just drop a point and then fill this in. And so here is then the latitude of Venus, let's see. Where are we, Venus, Venus? Down here at the bottom, you see, oh, let me put it over a little bit. 21 degrees, 49.2, and 47, 14.6. That's right there, like that. Uh, so that's how I plotted that GP. Now, and then what, what, what did we get for the ZN? Four, four, I mean for the Z, zenith distance, 4495.8. Four four five four four nine five. Hang on a minute. Oh yeah, four four nine five point eight. That's here. So I'm going to put a circle on that right now. Okay. So I just put a circle on that right this moment. Now we go over to to Ve to Vega. Edit it, and it's it's numbers again. You'll see here if you check this. These are all. These are all plotted exactly in the right spot. You could lock this if you wanted to. But now, and then this is 31, 36.9. Uh, that's this distance right here, zenith distance. So I plot that, and I say, put a circle on that, and then say, OK. Now, now let me zoom in here. Uh, OK, so look, so, OK, so first, now we're getting into the meat of the program. This is the fix we got from that. This is a fix from the two circles, which 
Now, you see, that's quite a distance off. If I do right click, uh, right, uh, um, 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 ruler tool, you see that's about six miles off. So that's not right. This is definitely not wrong by six miles. So here's what the issue is. And <clears throat> this program, like essentially all high-end navigation programs, has to choose what the shape of the Earth is when they compute distances. And I have an article. Let's see, where would we see that? Uh, okay, here's a, here's a reference to that. This is Great Circle Distance, three options. And I'll put this link here in the discussion. And here is, in a sense, the crux of the matter. Um, great Circle Distance, three options. And this is all about, this article is all about great circles and why there is inherently three different values that we have to consider in navigation, state-of-the-art modern navigation. And uh, one of them is the type that you would get reading any kind of a navigation, a typical navigation program. And that navigation program usually has as an average, uh, it uses the, uh, an approximation to the true shape of the Earth, the WGS84 uh, ellipsoid. And so it's using a radius, which is the average value of this ellipsoid right here. And that's what's used in a program when you calculate the great circle distance between two points. And this one goes through here and you San Francisco to Tokyo and shows you all three of them, all three of them. So the first one is what's typically used in a navigation program, uh, like, like uh, uh, QTVLM or Expedition or uh, Time Zero, Coastal Explorer, things like that. That's the radius that they use when they're calculating the distances. Now, if you go to your GPS, you go to your GPS unit, your handheld GPS unit or console, and you ask for the same distance, San Francisco to Tokyo, that you just measured on your navigation program, expedition, whatever, time zero, you'll see you get a different value. And that's because this program here, I mean, these, hand, these, these calculators, they actually use the real ellipsoidal distance where they, take, they let you choose what, what ellipsoid shape do you want to use, and then they will calculate that distance based on that. And again, the most common is WGS84. And then, uh, but the WGS84 that you get out of this calculator here will not be the same as this average one you get from here. It'll be much more precise. In, well, we're talking about small differences anyway, but it'll be more precise in this. So that's two of the different radius. And then there's the, the back to the third. And the third one is what we care about in celestial navigation. Celestial navigation assumes a spherical Earth, a spherical Earth where one degree equals 60 nautical, one degree of latitude is 60 nautical miles. And based on that, the radius of the Earth is, uh, well, 2 pi r equals 360 degrees, and that's the radius. So that's the whole issue. If you want to use a navigation program for doing celestial navigation accurately, like intersecting those two circles, then you are obligated to have an option that switches that radius of the Earth to a sphere of one minute equals one nautical mile. And that is a buried option, uh, uh, advanced option that you can turn on for this type of work in QTVLM. I don't know of any other program that has that option. But you do it here, you go to the option, configuration, and then advanced, and then here, earth radius, average. Now that average, and that's the one you would normally use you would normally use that, although frankly, it's not. We're talking about relatively small distances over thousand-mile ranges. That's the only place it matters. But anyway, you, that would, that you would usually use the average. But now we're switching to celestial, which is going to be now around Earth. One minute of latitude equals um, one nautical mile. So now you do that, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that intersection is right down here uh, where it should be. Now. Now we're still confronted with something else. It's not seven miles away. Right now it's like, uh, what's my, I got ruler tool. Right now it's about 0 0.3, 0 0.4. You know, three of 0 0.3, 0 0.4 miles away. But 
But here's the, here's the issue. This is right. This one is right. This method, and, and we can know this is right, uh, because, as I mentioned before, we have a program here that will, uh, our, we have a, a, um, a, a Python program that calculates precisely that intersection, precisely that intersection on the spherical Earth, and we know what that answer is. And so we know that this is the right answer. So what happens, all, what, all this is showing, and again, keep in mind, this is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 nautical miles. That's way, that's like in the, way into the limits of celestial navigation in general, just to take the sights. Or keep in mind the precise correction for the motion of the boat during the sights and so on. But just to be, uh, so that's in a sense agreement, frankly. However, the difference is this one has limitations. This plotting method, as accurate as it is and useful and in general practical, from all practical purposes, it's, it's completely useful. That's the way uh, mariners have uh, navigated with celestial navigation for uh, many, many decades or longer, uh, 100 years probably. Uh, I have to be careful and check the history on that. Since the Civil War almost, uh, 18, uh, well, okay. So, uh, but this is, this one, is, this is more accurate. So that's the whole point here. This is a very nice uh, technique for uh, doing uh, celestial navigation. And um, let me see what I want to do. Uh, let me, okay, here is a summary. Let me just put this summary up here, the procedure for each LOP. Look up the GHA and declination of the body. That's in the nautical almanac, in the nautical almanac. And then you do uh, the declination that you're going to plot. That is the latitude of the GP. The GHA is the west longitude of the body. Now, some, if the longitude's bigger than 200, then in fact, I mean bigger than 180, then basically it's an east longitude. But it turns out that uh, QTVLM will let you put in a west longitude, like we had a west longitude of 200 degrees and 39 minutes. You literally can type in the longitude is 200 degrees, 39.3 minutes west, and it will get it right. It'll solve that. Okay, and so then you have to figure the zenith distance. You look at HO, that's your sex in sight, plus the corrections. 90 degrees minus HO, that's the zenith distance in nautical miles. And you add a ring to the GP with that distance, same with the other LOP, the intersections you fix. Now, at this point, if you have an interest in such things, I would just grab any textbook or work form uh, textbook that you use or practice with, or your actual sites from a voyage, and then just uh, download a copy of QTVLM, load them up and do this, and you will see how impressive it is for doing very fast, precise uh, uh, celestial navigation. You can do more than two bodies if you want and so forth. So that's the technique I wanted to illustrate here. Um, we have, if you're moving, if you're doing a running fix, then, uh, then uh, we have to talk about how to do that with these circles. That's not quite so. There's an extra, an extra step in there. And, uh, but the standard method of doing running fixes by advancing a line of position, that works just fine. But it turns out that a precise advancing of a circle of equal altitude is a bit more sophisticated. And I'll have a video on that later on. But anyway, here's this very, uh, very exciting new uh, uh, aspect of the program to play with, QTVLM. Thank you.